Thank you very much, Maya, for that wonderful introduction. And uh, as we begin our satsang this evening, let us all sit upright for a few minutes. A little bit more bass. Take a deep breath in. Gently close your eyes. Let that fresh breath of air penetrate through every single blood vessel in your body. You hold your breath for four, five, or count of six. Just let it go, release, exhale. Take another deep breath in. This time, channel that air to all oxygen, to all of the capillaries, the smallest blood vessels in the body. Drop your shoulders and relax. Then exhale. As you take this last breath now, infuse that Shakti of Lord Ganesha into your minds. Let him purify every cell of this body. And as you exhale, let all the negativities go. Now, with your hands clasped, Heads gently bowed and their eyes closed. Bring him to the center of your foreheads as we touch his feet subliminally and we see his blessings in the following mantras. Hadiyo. Hadiyo. Kamale Bhyo Namo Nama Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Deva Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma We bow to the feet of Jagannath Maharani Shankar Mata, the Divine Goddess, the Mother of this Universe. We seek her blessings tonight. Yade Visarva Bhute Shu Matru Rupena Samsita Namastasya, 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 Namo, Namaha. To the feet of the Bhagavan Shivana, we bow. Karpur Gauram, Karunavataram, Samsar Saram, Ujjagendraha. Sada Vasantam Prudaya Ravinde Bhavam Bhavani Sahitam Namami. We bow to the feet of Bhagavan Sri Krishna, 
बाकी विंद्रावन बिहारी लाल बासुरी वाला मोहन मुरलिया घनश्याम वसुदेवसुतमेवसुचाणूर्मर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्णम वंदे जगद्गुरु यदा यदा हि धर्मस्य ग्लानिर भवति भारत अभ्युपानमस धर्मस्य तदात्मानं सुजाम्यहं परित्राणाय साधुना विराशाय च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापुनाथाय संभवामी भेयुगे Now we go before the feet of Pavanaputta Harmanji Mahavir Swami as we seek his blessings Ajulit Baladhamam Ema Shailabadeham Anujavan Trishanu Jnanina Madraganyam Sakala Guna Nidhanam Vanaranam Dhisham Raghupati Priyabhattam Vat Jatam Namami Principle of Pavan Putra Manaki Keyboards, can you do you mind playing like vibes or piano tone in the background instead of piano tune? Thank you so much. We now offer this beautiful prayer called Mangal Ashtakam, written by Goswami Tulsidas Ji. It's the very first sloka of Sri Ramchandramanas, entitled Bal Khan Mangal Ashtakam. It's a Lord prayer glorifying Bhagwan Sri Ganesha, Mother Bani, the goddess of speech, the sage Valmiki, the author of Ramayana. And of course, Bhagavan Shiva, Mangalashtakam. Uvarnanam arthasangharnam Rasanam chandasam api Mangalanam chakartaru Vandevani vinayaka Bhavani Shankaro Vande Shraddha Vishwasuru Pinao Yabhyam Vinana Pashanti Siddhaha Swantastam Ishwaram Vande Bodhamaya Vityam Guru Shankar Rupinao Yamashrito hi vakropi Chandraha sarvat vandate Sita Ram guna gram Punyaranya bribabrinao Vande vishudh vigyanao Kavishwar kapishwarao Principal Bhagavan Ram Chandra ki now, seek it up right once again. Let us chant three times the Maha Mantra, Shri Gayatri Maha Mantra. With our backs upright, we chant. Om Bhur Bhuvah Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvah Swaha तत् सवितुर बरेन्यम् भर्गु देवस्य धीमहि धियो योना प्रचोदयात् ओम भूर भुवह स्वाह तत् सवितुर बरेन्यम् भर्गु देवस्य धीमहि धियो योना प्रचोदयात् प्रेम से बोलो श्री गायत्री माता की जय नाउ आई हमली आस्क ऑल ऑफ यू लेट अस गो इन टू वन मिनट ऑफ साइलेंस दिस is yoga. It's called mauna. Mauna means absolute silence. And what we do during this these 60 seconds of silence, we tune our minds completely away from this mundane world and focus. If you want to look at the murtis, that's also fine. And focus on those murtis. Focus on any one of your murtis. Any one of maybe your ishdevta is one of the, is in one of those murtis. And only remove anything that's negative. Remove any any thoughts prior to coming to mandir this evening. And only focus now for 60 seconds. 
on that aspect of God. Before we do this, I like those of you with cell, I'm sure we all have cell phones. Please put them on silence because this is the time when cell phones mysteriously go off and distract us from these 60 seconds of silence. So take, up, take up a second or two, silence the phones, and let's go into Mauna. Breathe and fill the lungs with, with oxygen again and focus now for 60 seconds. We glorify Bhagavan Sri Ganesha as we begin this wonderful evening of Satsang here at Sri Lakshmi Narayan Mandir. Prathama Puja Vinayaka. The one who removes all obstacles in our lives. If there's any, if there are any blockages, if there's any heaviness, if there's any negativities in your lives today, I ask you to place them down to the feet of Lord Ganesha as we call upon him. Prem Sibulogajanan Swami Ki Jai. Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurme Deva Sarvakari Shusarvana Ganapati Bapa Moriya Mangala Murti Moriya Ganapati Bapa Moriya Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
The dust from the feet of the Guru is more sacred according to our scriptures than traveling to some of the holy places, Charodham. This is why when Guruji makes an entrance, or whenever you meet your Gurus, perhaps your Gurus like mine have gone to the beyond already. Then we seek what's called a Sadguru, someone who replaces, not replaces, but takes the place of that Guru temporarily. Tonight, wherever your Gurus are, wherever our Gurus are, we bow to them. Tonight, I bow to my parents who are down in Trinidad listening to us virtually. Pandit Shri Teacher Tulsi Pasad, my Pitaji, my father, and my mom, Ms. Grace Pasadji, bow subliminally to your feet tonight as we glorify in this beautiful bhajan. Prem Sabolo Shri Guru Maharaj Ki Guru Kripalam Kevalam 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 Guru Kripalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Friends of everybody Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Mata Kripalam Kevalam Pita Kripalam Kevalam Mata Kripalam Kevalam Pita Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Principal Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Sai Kripalam Kevalam Shiva Kripalam Kevalam Sai Kripalam Kevalam Shiva Kripalam Kevalam Friends of Allah Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Kevalam Haribo Guru Kripalam Kevalam Guru Kripalam Once again, Swagatam, welcome this evening to all the executives firstly and the members of Sri Lakshmi Narayan Mandir here in Houston. Thank you for allowing me to come and join with you, to sit with you in Satsang this evening. Let me say welcome to all of you, Swagatam, and thank you for taking the time from off your busy schedules to be with us this evening. To all those joining us virtually all over the world this evening, Swagatam. Dhanyabad, thank you for joining us as well. I know it's late on the East Coast. It's uh, we are our we are our behind, so to speak here. To the musicians and the Kirtan group, I wanted to give them a lovely round of applause, please. All of them, come on. <laughs> Pandits, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunties, friends, relatives, children, and of course 
और वर्चुअल ऑडियंस भगवान टीचर्स इन रामायण रामायन बड़े भाग्य मानुष तन पावा सुर दुर्लभ सब ग्रंथ न घावा इन एट मिलियन फोर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड टाइप्स ऑफ लिविंग क्रीचर्स दिस ह्यूमन बॉडी वी हैव टू गो थ्रू दैट होल साइकिल ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ टू अटेन दिस ह्यूमन बॉडी and one of the ways to go back from one of the nine forms of devotion to go back to godhead from where we have all come from so that we don't have to go through the cycle again is satsang go swami tulsidas ji also tells us sat samagam hari katha tulsi durlabh doi sut dara aur lakshmi papi ke bhi hoy our being our presence here tonight is not by guess is not by the invitation or the flyer our presence here tonight is because of our past karma our good deeds our parents our grandparents or four parents god bless them wherever they are it is because of some good thing that we have done that we have earned the right to sit in front of the murtis and most importantly amongst wonderful souls to sing and to chant and to glorify from the holy scriptures tonight let me say once again it's a very very i'm honored to be with you i'm humbled to be amongst you this evening and as we begin as i always do we give praise and thanks to the 11th incarnation of bhagwan shiva who is that pavan putta hanuman ji so i noticed that you all are a little bit quiet today um, i know the weather was bad last night coming into houston but i think the weather is a little better this evening na so bhagwan you know we looking at all the musical instruments this evening those are very costly and i always use this analogy bhagwan has equipped us with two musical instruments and they are free of charge right here and how do they work like this right so i employ you tonight as we sing as we chant to create the vibrations clap what does clapping do for us yes it sounds good it keeps timing and keeps rhythm with the music but you know physically what it does in physics scientifically it removes negative atoms from around you when you clap negative and positive come together and it, it, it dissipates so what happens when negativity comes away or moves away from you your aura begins to to become exposed now that light that we all have positivity vibrations you begin to feel the energy yes you may perspire a little but all that's good that's if you didn't hit the gym for the last week you may get a chance to work out tonight all right this is energy this is shakti we are about to build it we're going to take it to the next level now as we go to the storehouse of energy mahavir swami pavan putta hanuman ji prem se bolo pavan putta hanuman ki jai let us sing now shri guru charan saroj raj निज मन मुकुर सुधार बरनो रघुबर विमल जसु जो दायक फल चारी बुद्धिहीन तनु जान के सुमिर पवन कुमार बल बुद्धि विद्या दे अरहु काले विकार राम लक्ष्मण जान की जय बोलो हनुमान की राम लक्ष्मण जान की जय बोलो हनुमान प्रेम से बोलो राम लक्ष्मण जान की जय बोलो हनुमान की राम लक्ष्मण जान की जय बोलो हनुमान की जय हनुमान ज्ञान गुरु साहु जय कुश लोक उजाल राम अंजलि पुत्र पवन सुतराम महावीर विक्रम बजरंगी मत निवार सुमत के संगी अंजन वरण विराज सुवेशा आनन कुंडल कुंज वेशा आठ मध्य और भजा विराज आने मुंज जने उतान कर सोन के शरीर नंदन वेद प्रताप महाजन वंदन विद्यावान दुनिये पिता राम राज करी वे को मात प्रभु दर्श सुनी वे गोरसिया राम लखन सीता अनुवस्ते
being such a wonderful and cooperative audience. So many of you have turned out tonight for this wonderful evening of devotion and that we certainly will be doing. Our president had asked me to, if I can particularly extract a katha from Sri Ramachandramanas, that's exactly what we're going to be doing tonight. As we begin, our opening bhajan is one that refers to the katha that we're about to expound on. The bhajan translates, focus your mind on Lord Hari. Who is Hari? Which one of them is Lord Hari? Vishnu Bhagavan, yes. And he will undoubtedly take away all sufferings from people. Meditate on his name morning and evening. And he will surely remove all sufferings. His shadow pervades in the depth of the water, in the vast expanse of the sky, and in the huge mountains, in every form of matter. Open your mind's eyes and have his darshan. Whosoever rejects this principle in life wanders in falsehood in Maya. Tonight, we glorify him in this beautiful bhajan. Hari ka dhyan laga man mere. Hari ka dhyan laga man mere. मिट जाएंगे सब दुख तेरे सब दुख तेरे सुमिरन कर ले शाम सवेरे मिट जाएंगे सब दुख तेरे सब दुख तेरे हरि का ज्ञान लगा मन मेरे मिट जाएंगे सब दुख चल में तल में नील गगन में कण कण में है प्रभु की छाया रे इसमें मन के आखे खोले उसके दर्शन उसका पाया रे Thank you. 
दगर दगर पर गोता मेला रे और माथी है झूठी की माया रे भाई कौन सात धन ले जा I feel it warm. <laughs> this is bhakti resulting in shakti all in divinity. I'm not a poet, but appropriate choice of words for the moment that we share tonight. Excuse me. Now that we have sung, we have all clapped and infused this positive energy with the beautiful music from our musicians tonight. Certainly felt the presence of our Lord in our hearts, in our minds, even in our throat as we sing. Let us now take a divine scriptural plunge into the Sri Ram Charitamanas, the ocean, the lake of the deeds of Bhagwan Sri Ram. As narrated by the great poet, he's called Kavi Samra, the poet of all poets, Goswami, not just Tulsi Rashtri, you know. Goswami Tulsi Rashtri. He was given that highest authority. Tonight we'll see why. He wrote the Ramayan Sumira. As we sing tonight, again. Jo Sumira Tassiti Ho. Garnanayak Kadi Vadapadan. Praising Lord Ganesha, Bhagwan Shiva, and of course the Sage Valmiki. Let us sing Ramayan Sumira. Ask you to clap, clap, clasp your hands as we chant. It is a prayer. Jo Sumira Siddhu Ganinayak Kaivara Padna Usumirat Siddhu Oh, oh, oh. 
in Ramayana. Tonight we will speak about the breaking of the bow. Whose bow are we speaking about tonight? Who was the owner of this bow? Lord Shiva. Yes, the breaking of the bow. We'll understand what the significance of this breaking of the bow is. What is the meaning of it? But firstly, the Ramayana depicts the triple qualifies of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. And the relevance of Ramayana is not confined to a particular time, place or circumstance. It is of universal significance for all times. Its relevance is not limited to India alone. Look where we are and we are singing Ramayana. The Ramayana holds out as Rama as an embodiment of ideal qualities. He was the ideal father, ideal son, ideal husband, ideal ruler. And all of his teachings are written in Sri Ramcharitamanas. As a son, a friend, a master, a ruler, he was ideal without parallel. There was no one equal to him. And there is no one equal to him. In the world, one may be an ideal son. 
but not an ideal friend. But Rama stands out unique as the embodiment of all that is ideal. He was the best, or is the best. One should note an important aspect relating to the breaking of the bow of Lord Shiva at the courts of Janak. Who was Janak? Janak was the father of Mother Sita. And though the bow was broken, the string connecting the two ends of the bow did not break at all. I repeat, even though that bow was broken, that string that connected the two ends did not break at all. And that string of the bow stands for Sita and Rama. Unparalleled, unbreakable, that bond. Prakriti and Purusha. In fact, the bond between Rama and Sita, Paramatma and Prakriti, is an unbreakable one. When you think of the bond with your families, your parents, especially parents, that should be an unbreakable bond. The Ramayana, bond between Prakriti and Purusha. Prakriti and Purusha are two schools of philosophy that represents the fundamentals of our being. Prakriti is the material world. What is material? Including nature. Anything that is matter, physical, microphone, harmonium, psychological, character, and temper, disposition. And Purusha is the spirit and consciousness, or the witness. The Ramayana has been divided into two sections. The Purva Ramayana and the Uttara Ramayana. The Purva Ramayana deals with the valorous death of Rama, sorry, deeds of Rama, and his victory over indomitable heroes like Parashurama, Bali, and Ravan. Yes, heroes. These events speak of the dauntless courage, the much less valor, and the immense physical prowess of Sri Ram. The Uttara Ramayana in this, the latter half is suffused with karuna or compassion and seeks to install the Rama Tattva, the Rama principle in the hearts of all people. This bhajan we sing tonight, you know, when Lord Rama was making his entrance back into Ayodhya, pomp and pageantry and celebrations. How many of you watched uh, perhaps on YouTube or uh, has anybody been to Ayodhya in the last two or three months? I have. How many of you have watched the videos on the opening of that new mandir, Sri Ram Janmabhumi? So much excitement. Thousands of, literally tens of thousands of people to get a glimpse for maybe a fraction of a minute of that murti because you are moved, you are pushed and moved away. But the blessing and the feeling of being in Ayodhya. What is the meaning of Ayodhya? Ayodhya. There will never be war in Ayodhya. And this is why when we install Rama into our hearts and he lives in Ayodhya, there can never be war. And if there's never any war in your hearts, how can you get angry with people? How can you utter slurs? How can you say bad things about people? How can you judge people when all that is in your heart is Ayodhya, is Ram? We sing this beautiful bhajan tonight as we glorify him. Please don't forget to return to Ayodhya, the bhajan says. My Prabhu, I have prepared, I have prepared the path for you. Please come and stay with, with me in Ayodhya. Rama Bhura Mare Bhula Mat Jana Teri Ayodhya Chodi O Rama Ji Teri Ayodhya Chodi
What you just did is called Jaikar. What does Jai mean? Jai means victory. So you don't say Maryara Purushottam Bhagwan Rama Jai. No, no, no. Jai! Victory. Tonight I'm going to take you to the ashram of the sage Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra, an abode of peace and bliss. If you have ever been to an ashram, it is an abode of bliss and peace, total surrender, quiet, calm, some place you can meditate, sit peacefully. Everyone in the ashram was caring about their daily duties, you know, cleaning, bringing food, water, etc. Suddenly, one of the young students approached the guru with a bunch of palm leaves. Have you ever seen a book made out of palm leaves? If you visit one of the museums, perhaps here in Houston, I'm not sure if they have it, but especially in India, you will see books that are written on palm leaves, especially also in the Middle East, because paper wasn't around. So they used dry palm leaves. They still exist today. And he turned over a few of these palm leaves and passed it on now to an old hermit sitting by his side. And the master now, the guru, he asked the old man, please, Bolyana, read it out aloud. And he read, the emperor Janak of Mithila has resolved to perform a celebration of celebrated writer, Yekya, expressing the highest glory of righteousness. And he was praying now to the sage Vishwamitra, that if he would be so glorious to glorify and to bless with his disciples, his presence. Now, who is also in this ashram and listening now to the news about King Janak's invitation? Yes, Lord Rama and Lakshman, they were in Gurukur. You see, back then, when children, especially the boys, attain a certain age of puberty, they are sent to Gurukur. And the Gurukul means the home of the Guru, the Guru's ashram. To learn the arts, to learn Sanskrit, to learn music, to learn Dharma, and also to learn the art of archery. The sage Vishwamitra, how come they were there now in the ashram? You may ask the question. I just explained to you. However, the sage Vishwamitra had visited the kingdom of Ayodhya many, many years ago when these Rama and Lakshman were mere boys, they were children. And he said to the king Dashtar, O king, the demons have been vanquished. The demons, they have been taking control of the forest. They have been harassing all of the sadhus, all of the saints while they're conducting pujas and yagyas. Send Rama and Lakshman, these boys who are krakshas, they were called shabda bidhis. They can shoot a target even when their eyes close. They only have to hit, listen to the sound and they will hit the target right on the spot. He said, send them with me into the forest and they will rid, rid the forest of all of these demons, these rakshasas. So said, Dashrat made a promise and Lord Rama and Lakshman went into the forest and they went into this ashram and they vanquished all of the demons that were harassing this, the holy men. That's another katha for another, it's a huge katha. But the forest now have become safe just because of Rama and Lakshman's presence. Now, the about the yagya that is about to take place in Mithila is about to happen. When they heard all of this now, everyone in the ashram, ex they got excited. May it attain fulfillment. And Vishwamitra said, Tatastu, may it be very successful. He said, sons, addressing Rama and Lakshman now, now that we can travel through the forest freely, 
without fear of any demonic gangs. I have decided that we will start traveling tomorrow to Michala with the ashram residents. In other words, close up shop, close up the ashram, and all the residents of the ashram will travel on foot now to Mithila to witness this boat breaking of the bow ceremony. When he heard this now, Rama said, Master, Guruji, it is really a source of delight. Since you don't need Lakshman and I for anything else, we will return to Ayodhya if you permit us to do so. Please allow us to leave. And then Vishwamitra said, I gave my word to King Dashra for a few more things. I have to keep these words too because I promised him, I promised him that I myself will return you back to Ayodhya. So you see how the Guru is using his tact now? In other words, just don't go back to your father. I have to come with you to return to show your father that I have fulfilled my side of the promise. In this day and age devotees, back in this time, they practice something called Pran Jai Par Vachan Na Jai. Meaning that if you gave someone your word, even if it meant your life, your last breath, you fulfill that wish. You live up to your word. What do we have today? Broken promises, courts, lawyers, attorneys. This is the world we live in today, this age of Kali Yuga. He says, the Guru now, there's not enough time for me to take you all back to Ayodhya and then go to Mithila before the rites begin. If you too would accompany me to Mithila, you can witness the rite yourself and then we can all proceed to Ayodhya from there. He set upon a task now, the king Janak that is, while the, the Saint Vishwamitra was making his procession with his entourage now from the, from the, uh, the Gurukul, the king Janak was making preparations for his Yajna. A proclamation was issued now to expose that bow, the bow of Lord Shiva. And it was communicated to as many kings and princesses all around the kingdom. From, you know, from here, near and far. In those days, there was no WhatsApp message, there was no uh, Facebook and all the social media uh, devices. What they did was they had messengers of God on horseback and relayed these messages now on that same palm paper, palm leaf paper, to all of these royalties to come now to witness this yakya. And the bow was loaded on, it sat, sorry, on an eight-wheeled vehicle. And it was drawn now and pushed now by a large entourage of hefty, strong fellows. But they couldn't even move it a step. More men of gigantic nature now had to call now to be called in by scores now to drag this chariot or cart that had the bow on it to take it down to the center of the court that King Janak now was ready to perform this ceremony. When the last part now of the bow moved into the sacred enclosure, all of the priests, they began to chant hymns. They began to chant Vedic mantras now to initiate because it's a yajna that's about to take place. The nine traditional musical instruments, they began to play in harmony and that sound that we just created, the sound that we just generated by singing all these beautiful bhajans, that sound resonated now into the heavens to waken the shaktis, to waken the gods. The conch shells, the sunk, the shank were blown in pearls and peels. And the auspiciousness of the day now, the time of the day, was declared through rituals and song. Emperor Janak en en entered the enclosure and accompanied by a group of his priests. And they all carried in all the ingredients to perform this yajna. And long before that moment now, the enclosure was filled with all the kings and the princes, ministers, sages, Vedic scholars, you name it. Everyone wanted an opportunity to lift that bow and win Mother Sita's hand in marriage. Janak now the king, he walked in and he walked around. He made a circumambulation around the bow and offered some flowers and he bowed while chants now were continuing, all of the Vedic chants. He bowed before the divine bow and he spoke to the distinguished assembly. He says, prostrations to the sages, swagatam, welcome to this assembly. For many years, my forefathers, as well as many other monarchs, have been, as all you know, worshipping this divine bow, this divine bow of Bhagwan Shiva. He says, besides, it is already well known that none, no one, be he God, be he demon, be he yaksha, rakshasa, garud, gandhara, kinara, mahogara, 
has so far been able to lift this bow, to hold it, and furthermore to string the bow. All who attempted have turned back. Humiliated, in spite of this disdain, I have again resolved to bring the bow into this sacred enclosure. Whoever amongst you lifts the bow, or lifting it, strings it, or stringing it, fixes an arrow onto it, or even can hold the weight of the bow in his hands, can come forward and take this chance. The bow is before you. Then the King Janak bowed before the gathering with his palms like this, folded, and he sat on his lion throne. Vishwamitra was in the audience there, seated with Lord Rama and Lakshman. And he glanced, he took a glimpse at Lord Rama and smiled. The audience to the hall palace now, where the bow was, Mother Sita was seated up on her area, up on a balcony. And the King Janak now relayed. He said, he saw one day Mother Sita was cleaning this palace. And the bow was in the way. And she, with one hand, was able to move the bow, Mother Sita. And this is where he came up now with this challenge that whoever were to lift this bow, string it and put an arrow in it, would win her hand in marriage. My dear brothers and sisters, you could imagine now all of these royalties. Not only were they royalties, but they came with their egos inflated. I am the strongest. I am the wealthiest. I am the one that's going to lift that bow. Young and old, even, even in, their, in their later part of their ages, they wanted Mother Sita's hand in marriage. The entire air now became very silent. And one king started to prepare himself. He began to do push-ups on the ground, trying to get his strength up, you know. The other one was flexing his muscles, showing everyone, I am going to be the one lifting this bow. Sita is going to be mine. Tulsi Das, she says, some were caressing their mustaches. You know, these fellows had these long mustaches. They were curling up their mustaches and were, ah, you know, beating their chest. It's going to be me. I'm going to be the one to, to, to lift this bow. He also overheard some of them saying, praying to Lord Ganesha. Hey, Ganesh Bhagwan, if you let me lift this bow, I will give you lots of laddus. Sometimes we make bargains with God, don't Not so. Here's this fellow now making a bargain with Lord Ganesha. If you allow me, Lord, to lift this bow, I will give you lots of laddus. You see, they, they are all saying in their minds, we have come here to wed Princess Sita. But having learned also now that she is the daughter of Dharti Mata, planet Earth, they are saying, some of them says, it is not proper for us to marry the daughter, our daughter. So let us go away from here. Some of them actually got up and left because they didn't think it was proper. Then Goswami Tulsidas, she writes, he says, Jinike kachu vichar mai mahi, Chaap samip mahi na jahi. The kings who had some consideration or even some reservations in their minds, they walked away gracefully. And even though they were warned and prevented to do so, some kings did not pay any heed. They began and they embarrassed themselves. They could not even shake the bow. So they left and they walk, walked away with embarrassment. You see, boasting now, people were boasting. Some of them were boasting and they were saying that I... Lovely cell phone ringtones. <laughs> How do some of these folks that have come there, royalties, have come there now with so much abhiman, so much ego, that they are the ones that are going to win this contest? How do they expect to get from Ganeshwood, which is the last chakra, the first chakra in our body, to Shivahood, which is the top chakra? From the Shahastara, sorry, from the Anahat Chakra to the, sorry, Mooladhara Chakra to the Shahastara Chakra. One has to become desireless. One has to leave all desires right here. Remove those desires and then, and only then, can we go lift that bow. This next bhajan tells us, how do we relieve these, remove these desires? It says, O oh Lord, how can I present myself at your door? This is what they're doing. They're presenting themselves at the door of Lord Shiva with this bow. Oh Lord, I am completely ashamed to think that a dirty shawl I will wear to come back to you to account for my personal deeds. You sent me in this world with an immaculate clean body, free from any evil. But during the years I have lived, I have stained it. Dadaji Pandit, the late Hari Om Sharanji, gave us his beautiful hajjah. Let us sing together.
मैली चादर और के कैसे दार तुम्हारे आ पावन परमेश्वर मेरे मन ही मन शर्मा मैली चादर As the kings began to lift, now to try to lift the ball, let us see what happens in Joppa.
his eyes ready to put in our mind, he says, Bhoop sahas das ek hi para Lage udvan tar tar na tara Da gai na shambhu saras kaise Aami bachan sati manu जैसे कब राम चंद्र भगवान की जय ये कब प्लेयर लॉन्ग कब प्लेयर लॉन्ग वाले कब फैसले में प्लीज टेन थाउजेंड किंग्स ट्राइ टू लिफ्ट दिस बो ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा सम इवन जॉइन इसे लेट अस जॉइन नो वी कैन प्रॉब्ली शेयर मदर सीता एंड दे ट्राइ टू जॉइन देर फोर्सेस टुगेदर ट्राइ टू लिफ्ट बो � the bow of Lord Shiva had become like a virtuous devotee, would not deviate from the path of virtue by pers persuasion of anything of lust, anything of desire, calm, or crowd, or lobe, etc. And 10,000 kings stood up, Goswami to Siddhasi writes, and 10,000 kings failed. The bow was not allowed to move. The words of the kings and the inflated egos could not even have an effect on Mother Sita. Now, How vast was the pandal, the writer asks. If all 10,000 fellows now had broken that bow, then which one of them would have been able to marry Malzita? So you see how this test was now. In the entire assembly, one of the kings said, out of the 10,000, one zero and three zeros after that, out of the 10,000 of us, all the zeros are useless. But the number one is only one that stands out. And who was that one? Mother Sita, when she saw what was going on, even though she had the mala from Gaurima, Parvati Ma, which she prayed to the day before, she went to her temple and she began to pray to her. Ga Gaurima, let that mala that was around her neck, you remember the katha very well, her previous katha, that went and, and landed on the, on the neck of Mother Sita. And when she prayed to her for, for the Lord Rama's hand in marriage, that was the signal. That was the sign that everything is going to be okay. Even though she had that mala around her neck, it was given to her by the Devi. You know, you know there's a, a term in Trinidad called kilkite, colloquially. Her heart was kilkite. She was, you know, it was, it was pulsating. That I, I'm not too sure if, what if one of those other guys breaks the bone, not Lord Rama. She's looking at, at uh, Lord Rama. She began to perspire, even tears were in her eyes now. Add value, the meaning of this is, when we look at the zeros and the one in the 10,000, add value to our lives so that when we depart this earth, we will have accumulated positive karma, not wealth, you know. The only wealth that we're going to take is our karma. Remember this. So that one, we can achieve that oneness with Bhagwan. You know, amidst the battle of life, Mother Sita now, oh my God, sing the praises of Sri Ram. On this field, we will see heaven and earth right here on earth. And there's no duty that greater than chanting the name of Ram, which we are going to do now together. I want to hear all of you. We're going to, we're going to, to, to make this reverberate in, in here, the name Ram. His powers are so astonishing that the sun and the moon created by him are both inexhaustible sources of light, like a wick, even like a wick without oil. Today or this evening, we sing the praises of Ram. He Manavare the Bhajan says, Jeevan Hai Sangram. Let the meeting of the name of Ram in our hearts. Prem se bolo Mariyara Purushottam Bhagwan Ram Chandra ki. He Manavare, Manavare, Jeevan Hai Sangram. Haribo, Hajale Ram. Lord, you are. 
Slows down, and Mother Sita's heart will stop Kilkite in Lusami to Sira. She writes in the Katha. Now, in our next Doha, let us see what he says. their turn. Lord Rama sat, you know, very comfortable, very quiet. First what he did, he looked at all the spectators in the audience. They were very quiet because they had failed. And then he turned his eyes towards the balcony to Mother Sita. Not to say, well, now it's my turn and beat his chest and say, I'm going to get you. No, no, no. Our Lord does not break like that. He looked at Mother Sita and noticed that she was in deep distress because she was worried now, who's going to break this bow? 
And what did she do at that time? Immediately, when she saw Lord Rama's eyes and they made contact, the previous day, I'll take you back now to another katha, previous day, they met in the gardens. Lord Rama was collect and Lakshman, they were collecting flowers for puja. And Mother Sita was also collecting flowers. And one of her maids, her friends, peeked through the bushes and came back and says, Didi, Didi, two angels are walking on that side of the garden. One is tall and one is short. One is dark and one is fair. And she couldn't say anything else. And then Mother Sita went and she moved the branches like this. And their eyes, her eyes caught Lord Rama's eyes for the very first time. And she remembered this moment now. And once those eyes locked in, Mother Sita knew right away what was about to take place. Tonight, devotees, when you go before your murtis, I'm sure we all do, sometimes three times a day, twice a day, once a day even. I hope nobody does it was once a week or once a month. When you go before your murtis and you perform your arati and so forth, you perform your, your dhyanam, your puja, your prayers, how, whatever, in whatever form, make eye contact with that murti. Not just focus on just the materialistic part, which is the puja, the, the diya, the essence, chandan, flowers, etc. But have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with that God, your God. Whatever, whatever, whatever you call Him. Rama, Krishna, Allah, Jehovah, Jesus, Buddha. Whatever name you call God, God is but one. We call Him by different names. But have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your Lord. Speak to Him. And you know something? We worry about all these Sanskrit mantras. Yes, they are beautiful, but you know what? You know what language God understands best? Anybody? Tell me. Love. And where does the love come from? From your heart. Speak from your heart. That's the best way to communicate with God. Devotees, Goswami Tulsidashi now writes in the next Chaupai, as Lord Rama is about now, his turn has arrived. Let us see what he does. Goswami Tulsidashi tells us in Rama.
Kumar Ki Jai Ati Sundaram. You know what that means? Very sweet. Madhuram, like honey. This is Ramayana. When you sing and you listen to beautiful shlokas of Ramayana, tears come to the eyes. Why? You put yourself now into this palace of Janak, where all these 10,000 fellows are seated, 10,000 on one. And who was the one? Lord Rama. He's looking now at Baidehi. Dekhi Pipula Bikala Baidehi. Baidehi is Mother Sita. Nimisa Bhikata Kalpa Samatehi. Time is passing now. Tristabari Binujata Nutyaga. Mue Karei Kasudha Taraga. And Mother Sita is looking at Lord Rama now like a thirsty man who is dying for water. She's like, please, please, oh Lord, please, from the eyes now, please, you are the one to break this bow. You know, every moment that passed weighed on Mother Sita now as like a whole lifetime in this universe. If a thirsty man dies of a want of water, what avail is a lake of nectar after death? What good is a shower when the whole crop has already dried up? What is the use of repenting over a lost or missed opportunity? One of the things that will never come back, with three things we talk about. One of them is a missed opportunity. It will never come again. A spent arrow can never take that back. And the third thing is a spoken word. From the deadliest weapon in this human body, which is the tongue. A spoken word, you can never take it back. This is why install Rama in our hearts, in Ayodhya. So that everything that comes out of this bind body and soul, man krama bachan say it's called, is pure, it's sacred, and it is encased with the love of Lord Rama. How can you go wrong? How can you, how can you not do anything that is right? Devotees, Goswami Tulsidas Ji now is about to describe the breaking of the bow. And it takes us now into the, 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 the core or the, 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 the nectar of this katha tonight. Let us see what he says in this next shop.
says the thousands who witnessed this wonder kings citizens princes sages and elders when Lord Rama lifted now he touched first first what he did he bowed to his guru you see he didn't just look at Sita tapped his chest and say, okay I'm gonna go lift his bow now no 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 no. firstly he bowed to the feet of his guru because his father and mother weren't there so next order of that level of authority is guru he bowed to the guru and then what he did, what the thousand of those guys didn't do, he turned and he bowed to each one of them like this. He prostrated before every single one of the kings, princesses, all the rulers who came from near and far. So in other words, he made himself the littlest. In other words, showing that he had no animosity, no ego, no abhiman whatsoever. And he then bowed to the bow, which none of them did either. And no, he didn't make any bargain with Lord Ganesha to give him Ladus if he lifted the bow. Then, all he did was place the bow because he's an astute devotee of Lord Shiva as well. Om Namah Shivaya. Touched the bow, he lifted the bow. And as he lifted the bow, Goswami Tulsidasi writes, it emitted a dazzling spark of brilliant light that resembled a stab of lightning that one sees. We, we are, well, you all, are here in, in, you all have lightning here in, in Houston, I suppose. Well, you don't see nothing yet. Come to Florida. You won't see lightning. We are, the, we, are the, we are the lightning capital of the world. But similarly, when those streaks of lightning, that is what happened when he lifted that bow. It was a blinding type of light. Then, when the bow was in the air in the Lord's hands now, it bent automatically and assumed a curve form like the curvature of a parasol, like an umbrella. So it curved itself. And then the Lord bent it now in order to string it. No one could have seen him pick this bow up from the ground because of that light and strung it as well. And with his outstretched hand now, he pulled the string as far back to his ears. All they could see was this dazzling flash of light. And then Lord Rama was standing with this bow in his hands and as he drew the string back to his ears now to release it, what happened? What happened then? You all know the story? It broke, yes, it snapped in two. And everyone was shocked now in confusion and fear by this strange, unexpected explosion. Many fainted, some cried in terror, they thought it was a bad omen. The sage now utterly they began to pray to God. Why delay further? Except, except now for Janak, Vishwamitra, the sage, Rama and Lakshman, everyone was plunged into an inexplicable, inconsolable dread. You know, we have uh, next two weeks, I think, we're going to have a, an eclipse of the sun on a Monday, I think it is. And it's going to make its way, I think you will see it here in Houston as well. April? Eight. Eight, yes. And so they're already saying it's, this is a bad omen. People are saying, oh, we have to sit down and pray. We have to chant mantras and all these things. This is a phenomenon. It is a phenomenon. Yes, there may, there may be outages in cell phones and these types of things. But that is a phenomenon. Similarly, it was not an ordinary bow made by any craftsman. This bow was crafted by Vishwakarma, who was the, god, the, the smith or the, the, the carpenter or the engineer of the gods. And was intended to be used by Lord Shiva to kill demons. So naturally, this bow had celestial dimensions. Celestial dimensions of Bholinat. Who is Bholinat? Shambhu, Lord Shiva. Let us glorify him. We'll sing two verses of this bhajan tonight as we seek to seek his blessings. As his bow now, symbolizing his love and his devotion to Lord Shiva, we sing. Namo Mahadeva Shambho 
नमो सदा शिव जय परमेश्वर जय भुवनेश्वर जय शिव शंकर He tells us, you know, he says, this moment that the bow was broken, it honors Lord Shiva. That bow of Lord Shiva was like a huge ship, and the stretch of Lord Rama's arms was vast and like a fathomless ocean, whose depth and enormity could not be measured. And those deluded and ignorant people who had tried to cross the ocean with the help of this symbolic ship in this ocean can become that ship, part of that ship itself. Those who had laughed and thought the Lord would not have been able to break this bow because he was not a very, you know, uh, a pompous fellow. He was one, not one of the mightiest warriors in, in physical, physical looks. But when these fellows realized now what had just taken place, they bent their head in shame and they walked away. Then a thunderous applause encased the entire auditorium or that hall that this yagya was taking place. And a lot of musical instruments blowing up the shank, kettle drums began to play. And there was merriment and dancing now, celebration time. And what happened next, devotees? Janak's royal priest ordered Mother Sita now to proceed to Lord Rama and put the garland of victory around his neck and declare him victorious and seal this bond of marriage. Then Mother Sita then was escorted to the spot where Lord Rama stood near to the bow and she was much seized with ecstasy now. She became speechless with joy and seemed to burst through her heart and tears flowing from her eyes, tears of joy now flowing from her eyes. The time actually came for her to raise her hands now and garland her victor, her beloved Lord Rama. And then after she garlanded him, what did she do? She went down and bowed to his feet, seeking his darshan, a gesture of pain and respect. And she was absolutely stunned and stood immob immobile as a statue of Swami Tulsidasji writes. Her mind failing to register any thoughts and her body responded to no impulses at the time. She was locked in. And she was thrilled beyond imagination. And our final Doha tonight as we sing. Let's do it for Swami Tulsidas. She says, as we bring our Qatar to a close.
that these kings and others had and what is the point of it all when the Atma inside every single one of us is the same anything that you have that you deem to possess was given by God it's God you know just recently I was looking at a, at a documentary and I believe it was Sadhguru you all know Sadhguru Sadhguru was saying you know why take on all these worries in this world we worry about health Yes, it's good to worry about health. We worry about health, wealth, job, stress, traffic. You all have a lot of traffic. Debatable. <laughs> we worry about the things that when we leave this body, when the soul exits this body, we, can't, we don't take any of it. You don't take the traffic. You don't take the health. You don't take the wealth. You don't take the job. And you don't, definitely don't take the stress. He has a point. We worry and we pine about it. Then how does one get rid of this sorrow and enjoy bliss from our Qatar tonight? How do we attain this? Well, there's an easy path. When you have an intense desire to achieve this, there's no other path easier than this. It is difficult for us to get attached to things. It is easy to give up things, much easier to give up things. You feel that the world's attaching itself to you and because of this attachment, it causes pain. And what happens when you don't get something? When a desire is not fulfilled, what happens? It brings sadness. I've been trying to drive a Mercedes Benz for years now and I get it when I'm sad. That's a desire. If you think while you make an attempt to detach yourself from the world, the world is not getting detached from you, it is wrong. It is you who have, you and I have to detach ourselves from this world. The world has not attached itself. It's a, it's a, let me give you a small story. In India and some countries, it has been a tradition for people to trap monkeys. Those of us who have been to India will see monkeys all over the place. And what they do is they put a pot with a very small opening and they will put some food or put something nice in there, you know. So what the monkey does, it goes in, puts his hand into the pot, into this crevice, and grabs whatever is in the pot. But the monkey, realizing now that it's time to pull the hand out, he thinks somebody's holding the hand inside, but he doesn't let the food or the treat go. And what happens when you, when you hold onto the treat? The hand is swollen now. There's no way that's coming through the, the, the opening. And the monkey will not let it go because it's, again, it's a desire, it's something physical. It's, it's, he's holding on to it. So do you and I. This world, this mundane world, and the desire is like that pot. And once we get into it, and it feels good, and something that we want, we're not going to let go until we get it out. And what happens? We get entrapped. And this is how they, they catch these monkeys. So a little story, a little kahani. And decrease this desire, this vairagya. This, it also has been, you know, saying that less luggage and more comfort when you travel. What happens when you, I think all of us here travel quite often. When you go to the airport and you're overweight, what happens? Especially on an international flight. It, it becomes quite costly, not so? So the easiest thing to do is leave your luggage home. No, I'm just kidding. Take the required amount. You, in other words, let you, you obey the law. Same, similarly, if we leave that baggage right here, when it comes time for us to go, it's a very simple transition and hopefully it's back to Godhead. Devotees, in this long journey of life, we get attached to many desires in the form of luggage, in the form of baggage, and in the form of headaches. Our ambition and our attachments should be to decrease to some extent and if we can decrease the luggage of desires, then our journey becomes an automatic pleasure. Better than promoting your desires, promote your sacrifice. And what is sacrifice? 
yagya. Yoga, these are all sacrifices. Fasting, these are sacrifices. By more desires, more attachments will come. And more attachments will come to you, but satisfaction will never come because as the desires go up and you don't get them fulfilled, the unhappiness will also increase. And once the unhappiness goes beyond the desire, well, ho gaya. Devotees, these things keep adding on plus, plus, plus. By decreasing our desires and promoting sacrifice in us, we'll be able to rise to the heights of glory and do good. Taking the lesson from Sri Ram from our Qatar tonight, how he was able to sit as the very last person in that room after these 1,000 so-called royalties tried their best with all of their tricks and so forth, making deals with Lord Ganesh to, to, to get that, that bow lifted. And Lord Rama read very simply. Remember? Remember this from the Katha tonight. Firstly, he looked at Mother Sita. Then he bowed. Sorry, he looked at his audience and bowed to them. Then he bowed to, he took the blessings from his guru. Then, before he went to the bow, he also bowed to the bow. As musicians, as musicians, you will see all of us will bow to our instruments. Why? This is symbolic of Mother Saraswati. And the minute you put her first, and what we do is, you're not just bowing physically, you know, you're saying, Ma, oh Ma, you are the God of music, Goddess of music, I bow to you. Please allow me to play and to play properly. This is what we do as our blessing, as a musician as well. Same thing with the, with the painter, the artist, children in school. I'm sure you chant prayers before you take exams. Not only prayers, you have to study the past exams too. Brothers and sisters, with this, I bring this session of Ramayana to a close. We're just about at time. Let me thank all of you, all of the musicians here tonight. Give them a lovely round of applause, please. Fantastic indeed. And of course, the Kirtan group, you all did wonderful. Wonder Come on. Thank you to the members of this mandir, um, Bhaiji and family for allowing us to come again and sit and to glorify Bhagwan in, in the presence of these beautiful murtis here at Lakshmi Narayan. And to all of you joining us on the, on, uh, online as well, my uh, shishyas, I thank you very much for, for sharing this evening. I know it's late on the East Coast and wherever you are in the Caribbean, etc. And uh, continue to support Satya Sanatan Vedic Dharma and certainly this beautiful ashram, Sri Lakshmi Narayan Mandir. As we close with this final bhajan tonight, I ask all of you to sing, clap your hands. It says, with a flame of love burning for the Lord through imperishable devotion, with a mind perpetually attached on Him, devotees guaranteed to find the Lord. Prema ki agana ho, bhakti sagana ho, man mila gana ho to, prabhu mila jayenge. We are calling upon the Lord tonight. Prema ki agana ho, bhakti sagana ho, man mila gana ho to, prabhu mila jayenge. Prabhu mila jayenge. Prabhu mila jayenge. Prema ki agana ho, bhakti sagana ho, man me lagana ho to, Prabhu me le jayenge, Prabhu me le jayenge, Prabhu me le jayenge. Pridai me bhaav ho, anunay ki chhaav ho, Pridai me bhaav ho,
प्रभु मिल जाएंगे 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 प्रेम से बोलो मरी आरा पुरुषोत्तम भगवान राम चंद्र की जय कमोन आके बिंदा बन बिहारी लाल की पवन पुत्र अनुमान की जय As customary, when we finish and we can do Ramayan satsang, we sing what's called the Sarjan. Praises to all of the devis and devdas. Katha bi Sarjan ho tu hai.
Let us all stand by our teeth. Please with me before we close. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you very much. God's blessings to you. Can I ask you to give me one more lovely round of applause for all of the musicians? They've done a fantastic job tonight indeed. Koti Koti Dhanivan. Until we meet again, Jai Jai Sita Ram Sabkoi. Remember to love all and serve all selflessly and help ever and hurt never. Enjoy the rest of your evening, afternoon, or actually it's evening and night. And um, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. God bless you. Jai Shri Ram.